There you are, Mr. Kettle. Uh, yeah. Well, Mrs. Beale, look, if it's about the noise last night, I've already... Noise? Tried. There's enough racket to wake up the dead. Well, I'll see it. Four o'clock in the morning before I got back to sleep. All that coming and going. How many people did you have in look, there, Mrs. Anymore? Beale, I've said I'm sorry. Just let's leave it at that, eh? Where is she now? Still asleep. Look, I'm sorry I just walked out like that. I, I thought it the best thing to do. I thought you probably wanted to talk. I did. She didn't. End of story. She didn't... After I'd gone, she didn't say anything about me. Like what? Well, she can't be feeling exactly matey towards me, can she? Not after bursting in on us like that. It's a bit classic, wasn't it? Funny, Brian. Oh, who's laughing? No, she didn't say much at all. Really. Beyond fact, she's determined to leave school and, and stay here with me. Look, Brian, you can't just sit around talking about it. You've got to do something. Have you phoned her mother? Hmm? Well, the school will have told her by now that Jennifer's done a bunk. She'll be worried sick. No, no. I'll, uh, I'll phone her. I'd, I'd better phone the office while I'm there. Thanks. I'll take the day off, see if I can't sort this mess out. It looks a bit bleak now, but once you've got some of your own things here, you made it look more homely. And you did say yourself it wouldn't be for very long, just as a stopgap until you've got yourself sorted out. It's fine. Don't worry, Kath, it's fine. No, it's not. It's a dump. It's a seedy, depressing dump. I honestly thought he'd come round to the idea. Well, I knew he didn't like it very much, but... Well, it's not your fault, Eric. It's just that Gavin... Well, he doesn't like having people staying at the house, not anybody. That's all I can do to make him let his mother come to stay. Yes, who is that? I'll be all right, really. 
Well, you don't have to bother about the rent anyway. Well, not at first. What will Gavin say to that? Well, you're my brother. I can't help you out when you need it. Look, let me talk to him again. I'm, I'm sure he'll come round once he's thought about it. I know he will. Kath, face it. I embarrass him. Oh, come on, Eric. No, look. I prefer to be here. It's anonymous. That's all I need at the moment. A bit of anonymity. So stop worrying, all right? What are you going to do about money? Well, something worked out. I still don't see why you can't go back to your old job. Well, you know David will have you back like a shot. Why don't you talk to him? Phone him. How long can it do? No. You're your own worst enemy, you know, Eric. You really are. Well, shall we start bringing out the things? That is, if you've decided to stay. And I have. On one condition. I pay my own way, all right? Oh, if that's what you want. It is. I've got a condition to put to you as well. But this time you let me help you, that you don't block me out like you did before. That's a deal. Right. Well, let's get crushing, then. You better check around and make sure there's everything here you'll need. Oh, Mrs. Beale, what can I do for you? I brought the duplicate keys in case you need them. Thank you. Eric. Uh, Mrs. Beale, this is my brother, Eric Prentice. Your brother? Oh, well, nice. I'm glad to meet you. Uh, Mrs. Beale lives on the ground floor front, so I expect you'll be bumping into each other from time to time. You're joining us, then? For the time being. Oh, well, if there's anything I can do, you know, to help. Anything you need. Any kin of Mrs. Singer's. Very kind, thank you. I'll pop in and see you, Mrs. Beale, before I go. Working in London, are you? That's the general idea. We well, haven't got a job yet, then? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. I'll see you later, then, Mrs. Beale. right -o. Now, just remember, ground floor front. Anything you want, just knock. You'll have to watch yourself with that one. She's got a nasty habit of finding out about people. Come in. Yours, I think. Thank you. Would you like to come in for a moment? I've got some coffee on the go. Why not? How did you sleep? Have you had any breakfast? I can make some toast if you like. No, thanks. Well, it's no trouble. I'm not hungry. Look, Jennifer, about last night. I'm sorry you had to find us that way. I'll survive. Well, I hope we can still be friends. Why? Well, because I'd like us to be. You sound like Jimmy, Mum's husband. He's always on about us being friends as well. And are you? In front of Mum we are. You should see us. It's like a performance. When she's in the room, he chats me up, asks how I'm doing, all that. As soon as he, she goes out of the room, he clams up, buries his head behind the newspaper. Perhaps he's shy. Perhaps. Well, he's in a difficult position as well, you know. They always do that, teachers. Put themselves in other people's places to experience. Anyway, why should we like each other, Jimmy and me, with nothing in common except for the fact he happened to marry my mother? Isn't that enough? Not for me, no. I think people should be able to choose their friends, not just accept them, because it makes life easier. Well, we can't always choose our parents, but more often than not, we love them. Maybe we do that because it's easier as well. That's a bit negative, isn't it? Maybe I feel negative. 
Maybe I've got cause to. Yes, well, it sounds more like self-pity to me. Look, I think I know what you're feeling. Some of what you're feeling, anyway. Oh? You're resentful of your stepfather, your parents, me, the whole setup. It's only natural. Chose, does it? Just a bit. I haven't always been. Ask Dad. I was your model child once upon a time. Always did my homework, always made my bed. Always punctual. You've never caused me a moment's worry. Mum said that to me once. I wish now I had. Maybe then they'd have taken more notice of me. Consulted me. Didn't they? Only after the event. After they'd made all their plans. When they split up, I was shunted off to stay with my grandmother. While they sorted things out, you know, what was whose and all that. So I tried to talk to her about it. About... Well, about how I was feeling and... But she said I had to think about them, that I wasn't to make things difficult for them. Why shouldn't I? They'd made things difficult enough for me. Is that why you came here last night, to make things difficult for your dad? No, I came because I had nowhere else to go. I'm sorry, Mrs. Yes, I'm going to phone Mother right now. My fine, thanks a lot. Uh, Jimmy, Brian, is Pat there, please? Yeah, yeah, it's about Jennifer and calling. Jimmy, Jimmy, please, would you just get Pat to the phone? I don't want to have to go through this twice. Hi. Oh, hello. I'll give you a hand in a second. It's all right. It's not like you. Please, Hello, Pat. Pat, Jennifer's here just with me. Sorry. Yeah, about 2 o'clock this morning. Mm. No, she's fine. She's fine. Yeah, I've just spoken to the headmistress. No, just that she hated the school and... Look, look, Pat, no, there's no need for that. I mean, if she'd wanted to see you, then presumably she'd have come to you rather than... Look, no, Pat, look, don't come over. Just leave it with me. I'll hand it. Oh, How else? Just put that on top of it. I'll get through work. What are you putting here, anyway? Oh, this and that. Trip to the train. What's that? Where are you lifting? I'll phone you tomorrow when I'll fail. Because one way or another, I'm going to have her back at school on Monday, all right? Last one. You've earned yourself a cup of tea, I'd say. Thanks. What's in this lot? Bits and bobs. Uh, you don't mind coffee, do you? Well, I have no tea yet. As long as it's wet. Hey, you've been to all these places? Hmm? Cairo, Madrid, Beirut. Most of them, yes. Mm, lucky you. You lived here long? Too long. Getting on for a year now. I only meant it to be for a few weeks till I got myself set up. <laughs> Except I didn't. So here I am. Uh, you don't mind it out of a beaker, do you? That's all I've got. You're lucky to have that. Should have seen what I had when I moved in. Tooth glass, leaky kettle, plus a bit of rusty cutlery. <laughs> One of these days, Gavin Singer will end up in his own court. Not before time. You met him yet, Mr Singer? Yes. He's my brother-in-law. Look, just be sensible. Of course I had to ring her. Couldn't just leave her stewing about you now, could I? Well, could I? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what you said to her. Look, Jen, you, you can see how I'm fixed. There must be an empty room in the house. I could rent it. Or you could rent it for me. There isn't. Well, I might fall empty. You never know. And what about school? I could go to a local school. Perhaps your teacher friend could fix me up at hers. Well, she can't. She's out of work herself. Oh, well, in that case, we'll have to sort something else out, won't oh, we? Oh, Jen. Or maybe I'll enrol at Secretarial College. That way I can get a job and get off all your back. It's not a question of getting off our backs. It's a question of your future. Well, let's talk about it later, shall we? Right now I'm going to wash my hair, if you've no objections. Don't go on apologising. There's no love lost between Gavin and myself. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And thanks for the help with the... Ah, oh, any time. Yeah, what's that then? An easel? No, a tripod. I'm a photographer. Oh? Well, of sorts. My 
car. Eric Prentice, photographic artist. I'm impressed. Is that where you was before, Sidmouth? Mm, yes, I must get the address changed. Specialising in instant oils. A unique process combining photography with oil painting. Well, what's that mean? Just an idea I hit on. To make money. Does it? I hope so. I'm going to get pretty hungry if it doesn't. Well, what is it? Touching up photographs or something? Uh, something like that. Ah, oh, trade secret, eh? <laughs> You're not really interested, are you? Well, try me. Well, first of all, I take a photograph. Uh, a portrait, perhaps, a dog, someone's house, whatever the client wants. And then I make it into a slide and project it onto canvas, or like those, and uh, paint it in. Can I have a look? Hmm, yeah. Yeah, these are yours. Oh, they're lovely. They're really smashing. You think so? Well, don't you? Well, I try to think about it as little as possible, to be perfectly honest. That's the beauty of it. It requires absolutely no mental effort on my part at all. Ah, oh, some of these are really smashing. Oh, don't be taken in, my dear. This is a completely commercial venture. I'm not fooling anyone I'm creating great works of art. Least of all, myself. I'd have one if I could afford it. How much do you charge? Depends. If it's a straightforward job, 15 pounds. If not, anything up to 50. Oh. But for some people, I have a special rate. Especially people have been so kind as to lug these things up two flights of stairs. How much? Gratis. Honest? I'll take a photograph now. I think I've got some film on the end of a roll somewhere. Mm. Well, we better get this place straightened up a bit first. Oh, good uh, hand. Yeah, just pile it on in a little corner. Photographic paper. Ruins if it's exposed to the light. Hi. I'm just off to the Labour Exchange and to do some shopping. Is there anything you want? Well, yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, there is. I've got a bit of a list. Is that okay? Okay. Where's Jennifer? She's upstairs washing her hair. What did her mother have to say? Oh, she was all for coming straight over. I managed to talk her out of it just. Why don't you take her out to lunch somewhere? Who, Pat? Jennifer. Explain things. Try and talk some sense into her. Yeah, that might work. Look, i tell you what. I'll leave my door on the latch, so if we're out, you can just ditch the gear in here, yeah? Okay. Thanks. Well, I'll, um, see you this afternoon, perhaps. Perhaps. Now, all the good it'll do me. I'll keep my fingers crossed. That makes two of us. Turn your head towards this light a bit. That's it. Perhaps if you were to look over your shoulder, like that. Your hair. Can you fluff it up a bit? Like you've been in the wind. What, like this? Much better. Hold that. Fine. Was that all? Mm hmm. Now I make it up into a slide. Come in. Oh, hello. He's been taking my picture for a painting. Oh. All right, I'll call back then and see how it's going. Of course. Clever, isn't he, your brother? What's all this then? Pictures by numbers. A unique process, combining photography with oil painting. Oh, Eric. We all have to live, Cal. But it's rubbish. It pays the rent. I can't bear to see you selling yourself short like this. So you've often said. And I'll go on saying it until you do something about it. Kathy, you said you wanted to help me, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Well, yes. And you can. You can let me work this out in my own time and my own way. All right? 
You don't want anyone to help you, Eric. Not me or anyone else. You never have. That's why you're in this mess. Scraping along with this nonsense. If you'd only let someone get close to you, talk to you. Kathy, please. But you wouldn't, would you? Because you're too proud. Just like Dad in that way. Proud and obstinate. No one's blaming you for what happened. Could have happened to any one of us at any time. You're acting as though it's something to be ashamed of. Perhaps it is. Anyway, let's forget it, eh? That's all I want to do, forget it and start again. Doing this? Yes, doing this. I did that prescription for you. Oh, when I brought over some odds and ends, I thought you might need. Well, I've, I've got to go. I've got to collect the kids from school. You sure you're all right? Quite sure. I'll pop in again tomorrow, make sure... Kathy, don't are... fuss. I'm all right. Honestly. Kettle in. Well, I'm not sure he was. Hang on, I'll try his door. He's gone out with his daughter about half an hour ago. Left his door open. Can I take a message? Uh, well, I... My daughter's staying with him. I'm his ex-wife, you see. He was half expecting me to call. Well, you can wait inside if you like, as long as you promise not to steal the silver. That's very kind. It saves me making another trip. Thank you. Oh, there's going to be trouble from that quarter. You should have heard the racket last night. Mrs. Beale, at this moment, I do have problems of my own. The last thing I want is to hear about anybody else's. to startle you. I'm waiting for Brian Kettle. Um, oh, he's gone out to lunch, I think. He's oh, Mrs. Not. Harris, the job centre phoned. They'd like you to call in on Monday. Oh, maybe it's my lucky day. Maybe. I um, did some shopping for Brian, Ruth Harris. I'm Pat, his ex-wife. Yeah. The reason I'm here is that our daughter Jennifer's run away from school. I expect she's gone to lunch with him. Yes, I expect she has. That could mean he's getting somewhere with her. I'm sorry, I don't suppose you'd understand. I'll leave a note. Or perhaps you could pass on a message to Brian. Yes, certainly. Could you explain that I've been here? Not in front of Jennifer, if you can help it. No, I'll try not to. Say that I'll come back on Sunday. In fact, I think Brian had better phone me again. Yes, very well, I'll tell him. Thank you so much.